Now this is a beautiful integral, it's absolutely gorgeous. And you can uh, solve it using the Feynman technique to derive an even more beautiful result. So first of all notice that the cosine of x is an even function and so is x squared plus 1. So we have an even function that we're going to integrate and because of a property of even functions instead of integrating from negative to positive infinity you could just integrate from 0 to positive infinity and just double the result. So we're interested in the integral from 0 to infinity of the cosine of x divided by x squared plus 1 and uh, this is the uh, integral that we're going to use to define our integral function where i is a function of some parameter a. Now where exactly are we going to place this parameter? Well we could try the easiest possible guess first. So let's just place it next to the x as part of the argument of the cosine function. And proceeding with the Feynman technique or Feynman's trick or Leibniz's um, integral rule. It's basically just uh, differentiating under the integral sign, right? So we're going to take the derivative of i with respect to a and of course you can perform this switch up of the derivative and the uh, integral operators. So that's going to be the integral from 0 to positive infinity and once you perform this switch up the total derivative is going to be converted into a partial derivative with respect to a. So we're differentiating partially with respect to a the cosine of ax divided by x squared plus 1. And uh, since we're differentiating partially uh, with respect to a that leaves the uh, x squared plus 1 or the 1 over x squared plus 1 as just some constant multiple and the derivative of the cosine function is of course a negative sine so we have negative sine a x and as per the chain rule because we have to uh, differentiate the uh, argument of the cosine function with respect to a and that leaves x as a constant so we're gonna get the uh, constant x outside so now the structure of the derivative of i with respect to a becomes the uh, negative of the integral from 0 to positive infinity of x times sine of ax divided by x squared plus 1. And now to perform some trickery. So if you search the multiverse for the version of Loki who is a mathematician, he'll tell you to do something like this. So you take the negative sign as it was and you write a space between the x and the sine of ax terms that I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say is that you write the terms by leaving a large space in between them and of course you are dividing by x squared plus 1 and what are you going to do with all this extra space well it would be quite nice if I had an x square in the numerator because I have an x square in the denominator and I can have that. I can have that provided that I multiply upstairs and downstairs by x. And then it would also be useful, it would also be useful if I had a plus 1 in the numerator, which I can have, but only if I subtract a 1 as well to preserve equality, of course. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to separate uh, two, I'm going to uh, separate the terms inside the integral. So you have a negative sign and you have x squared plus 1. Uh, this x squared plus 1 times the sine of a x divided by x times x squared plus 1, correct? And then you have uh, two negatives make a positive. So the integral from 0 to infinity of a uh, sine of a x divided by x times x squared plus 1. Now... The, on the right hand side of the uh, equation for the derivative of i with respect to a you have a you have a very interesting term on the uh, on the left this this term over here the first term on the right hand side anyway so if you cancel out the x squared plus 1 terms you're left with the negative sign of with the negative of the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of a x divided by x and uh, once again, we're integrating in the x world now, right? We are integrating with respect to x. So you can perform another piece of, uh, another little piece of trickery by multiplying the denominator by a and also multiplying the numerator by a. 
Now, since A is a constant, you can actually take this constant into the differential element d, uh, dx. So instead of writing A times all this dx, I could just write the uh, differential of A times x. And now what you have here is just the Dirichlet integral that I have solved in a previous video on, on uh, the Feynman trick. So if you haven't seen that video or you're not familiar with the results, then I'll, uh, I've provided the link to the uh, I provided the link to that video in the description of this video. So do check that out. Now the result of this integration is pi by two, and of course you had this negative sign, and with it you have the integral from zero to positive infinity of sine of ax divided by x times x squared plus one. And this is uh, the derivative of i with respect to a. Okay, now what? Now what? Well, uh, I have a sign term here, right? And if I uh, differentiate this with respect to a again, I'm going to get an x times the cosine of ax, which is going to give me something familiar. So let's uh, differentiate once again with respect to a, and the derivative of a constant is, of course, 0. And you're left with the integral from 0 to positive infinity of a uh, the sine becomes a cosine ax, and of course the x was a constant because we were differentiating partially with respect to a, and you notice something now that the x's upstairs and downstairs cancel out, and you are left with the integral from zero to infinity of the cosine of ax divided by x squared plus one, which is exactly the integral function that we defined earlier. So yeah, this is cool. This is really cool. So that means the second derivative of i with respect to a equals i of a itself. Now we're left with a uh, second order differential equation in i, which has a very trivial solution. So the solution to this uh, differential equation is i of a equals some constant c1 times e to the negative a plus c2 times e to the a. So what about these constants? To determine two constants of integration, you definitely need two initial value conditions. So let me write the uh, initial value conditions. I need one for i and another for i prime. So let's take a look at the structure of our integrals. i was the integral from 0 to infinity. Uh, this was i of a anyway. So i of a was the integral from 0 to infinity of the cosine ax divided by x squared plus 1. So I see that I can do something over here. I can do something. If I take a equal to 0, that is if I take i of 0, then up here I have the cosine of 0 times x is 0, which equals 1. And the integral of uh, 1 by x squared plus 1 from 0 to infinity is, of course, pi by 2. So i of 0 is pi by 2. And now what about the condition for i prime? Well, let's take a look at i prime, the uh, last equation that we had for i prime. And this is uh, what we had before differentiating again with respect to a. So this is what we had, the uh, terms in purple. So if I notice one thing, I have a sine function here, right? And if a equals 0, that is, if I look for i prime uh, of a at a equals 0, if a equals 0, then you have the sine of 0 which is zero. So this definite uh, integral vanishes and you're left with only uh, negative pi by two. Okay, nice, nice. Very nice, very nice. So this is negative pi by two at i prime of zero. Now to plug in these, uh, these conditions. Now I have i of a, but if I want i prime of a again, I can just differentiate it with respect to a again. So i prime of a is gonna be it's a negative c1 e to the negative a plus c2 times e to the a. And uh, i of 0, which is pi by 2. And if you plug in 0 here and here, you're just going to be left with c1 plus c2, correct? So this is c1 plus c2. And i prime of 0 also is actually equal to a negative pi by 2, right? So negative pi by 2 equals a... Once again, c1, negative c1 plus c2. 
So that means we can do something pretty obvious. We can just add them up and cancel out the pi by twos, and you are left with a uh, c ones are cancel out, canceling out as well. So that means zero equals two times c two, which implies that c two equals zero. That's great. Now that c two equals zero, and we look at this uh, equation that has some cross marks in it now. If c two is zero, that implies that c one equals pi by two. So you have this really cool looking result of i of a equaling to uh, c1 which is pi by 2 times e to the negative a which can be written as pi by 2 uh, times e to the a. We wanted the integral of uh, 0 from uh, the, the integral from 0 to positive infinity of the cosine of x divided by x squared plus 1 which is just your integral function with uh, a being replaced by a 1 that is a is equal to 1 so all you have to do is just plug in the value a equals 1 and you get a an absolutely gorgeous result of pi by 2 times e and it gets even better when you have negative infinity to positive infinity as the limits of integration because you'll have twice of this result which is pi by e and wait we didn't need the a times x because a was set equal to 1 so there you have it you have a you have an absolutely gorgeous result and we got to it using Feynman's technique so I hope you liked the video, I hope you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe, and thank you, see you next time.